August 20th, Daily Video Bible Reading from the Net Bible, Job chapters 40 through 42 of the Old Testament. Then the Lord answered Job, Will the one who contends with the Almighty correct him? Let the person who accuses God give him an answer. Then Job answered the Lord, Indeed, I am completely unworthy. How could I reply to you? I put my hand over my mouth to silence myself. I have spoken once, but I cannot answer. Twice, but I will say no more. Then the Lord answered Job from the whirlwind. Get ready for a difficult task like a man. I will question you, and you will inform me. Would you indeed annul my justice? Would you declare me guilty so that you might be right? Do you have an arm as powerful as God's, and can you thunder with a voice like his? Adorn yourself then with majesty and excellency, and clothe yourself with glory and honor. Scatter abroad the abundance of your anger. Look at every proud man and bring him low. Look at every proud man and abase him. Crush the wicked on the spot. Hide them in the dust together, imprison them in the grave. Then I myself will acknowledge to you that your own right hand can save you. Look now at Behemoth, which I made as I made you. It eats grass like the ox. Look at its strength and its loins and its power in the muscles of its belly. It makes its tail stiff like a cedar. The sinews of its thighs are tightly wound. Its bones are tubes of bronze, its limbs like bars of iron. It ranks first among the works of God. The one who made it has furnished it with a sword. For the hills bring it food where all the wild animals play. Under the lotus tree it lies in the secrecy of the reeds and the marsh. The lotus trees conceal it in their shadow. The poplars by the stream conceal it. If the river rages, it is not disturbed. It is secure, though the Jordan should surge up to its mouth. Can anyone catch it by its eyes or pierce its nose with a snare? Can you pull a leviathan with a hook and tie down its tongue with a rope? Can you put a cord through its nose or pierce its jaw with a hook? Will it make numerous supplications to you? Will it speak to you with tender words? Will it make a pact with you so you could take it as your slave for life? Can you play with it like a bird or tie it on a leash for your girls? Will partners bargain for it? Will they divide it up among the merchants? Can you fill its hide with harpoons or its head with fishing spears? If you lay your hand on it, you will remember the fight and you will never do it again. See, his expectation is wrong. He is laid low even at the sight of it. Is it not fierce when it is awakened? Who is he then who can stand before it? Who has confronted me that I should repay? Everything under heaven belongs to me. I will not keep silent about its limbs and the extent of its might and the grace of its arrangement. Who can uncover its outer covering? Who can penetrate to the inside of its armor? Who can open the doors of its mouth? Its teeth all around are fearsome. Its back has rows of shields shut up closely together as with a seal. Each one is so close to the next that no air can come between them. They lock tightly together, one to the next. They cling together and cannot be separated. Its snorting throws out flashes of light. Its eyes are like the red glow of dawn. Out of its mouth go flames. Sparks of fire shoot forth. Smoke streams from its nostrils as from a boiling pot over burning rushes. Its breast sets coals ablaze and a flame shoots from its mouth. Strength lodges in its neck and despair runs before it. The folds of its flesh are tightly joined. They are firm on it, immovable. Its heart is hard as rock, hard as a lower millstone. When it rises up, the mighty are terrified. At its thrashing about, they withdraw. Whoever strikes it with a sword will have no effect, nor with a spear, arrow, or dart. It regards iron as straw and bronze as rotten wood. Arrows do not make it flee. Slingshones become like chaff to it. A club is counted as a piece of straw. It laughs at the rattling of the lance. Its underparts are the sharp points of potsherds. It leaves its mark in the mud like a threshing sledge. It makes a deep boil like a cauldron and stirs up the sea like a pot of ointment. It leaves a glistening wake behind it. One would think the deep had a head of white hair. 
the likes of it is not on earth a creature without fear it looks on every haughty being it is king over all that are proud then job answered the lord i know that you can do all things no purpose of yours can be thwarted you ask who is this who darkens counsel without knowledge but i have declared without understanding things too wonderful for me to know you said pay attention and i will speak i will question you and you will answer me i had heard of you by the hearing of the ear but now my eye has seen you therefore i despise myself and i repent in dust and ashes after the lord had spoken these things to job he said to eliphaz the temanite my anger is stirred up against you and your two friends because you have not spoken about me what is right as my servant job has so now take seven bulls and seven rams and go to my servant job and offer a burnt offering for yourselves and my servant job will intercede for you and i will respect him so that i do not deal with you according to your folly because you have not spoken about me what is right as my servant job has so they went eliphaz the temanite bildad the shuite and zophar the naamathite and did just as the lord had told them and the lord had respect for job so the lord restored what job had lost after he prayed for his friends and the lord doubled all that had belonged to job so they came to him all his brothers and sisters and all who had known him before and they dined with him in his house they comforted him and consoled him for all the trouble the Lord had brought on him and each one gave him a piece of silver and a gold ring so the Lord blessed the second part of Job's life more than the first he had 14,000 sheep 6,000 camels 1,000 yoke of oxen and 1,000 female donkeys and he also had seven sons and three daughters the first daughter he named Jemima the second Keziah and the third Karen Hapak. nowhere in all the land could women be found who were as beautiful as Job's daughters and their father granted them an inheritance alongside their brothers after this Job lived a hundred and forty years he saw his children and their children to the fourth generation and so Job died, old and full of days. God, I need to learn to keep my mouth shut like Job did. Put, put my hand over my mouth and keep it shut. Ah, maybe one of these days I'll learn that lesson. You know, I find it interesting at the end of this story about Job. Um, this reconciliation that took part between him and the community but specifically between him and his three friends this this forgiveness that had to happen um, and interestingly enough I noticed that Elihu isn't in that forgiveness piece um, and I don't want to read anything into it uh, but there was reconciliation between him and his three friends once they they apologized and they not only have to apologize but Job also has to forgive them for that reconciliation to happen and the most important part of that was him being humble to you and you coming in and making sure that that happened you know so many of us have broken relationships out there some of them need to stay broken like between Job and Elihu I think that was part of the reason um, but it still means that, that forgiveness needs to happen. Maybe not reconciliation, but forgiveness needs to happen. And then there's relationships where forgiveness needs to happen and reconciliation needs to take place. But, but we know that that can only happen, truly happen with you, with you interceding on our behalf. So God, I just pray today for all of the broken relationships that are out there. And there are so many. Some of them are for serious reasons. Some of them are for reasons people have probably forgotten. But one of the things that Job did at the end of this story is he reflected you. He reflected your grace, your mercy, your forgiveness of us to his three friends and said, yes, of course, even though you've been incredibly cruel to me in my, in my time of hardness, yes, of course, we can still be friends and hang out together and, and have a meal together. Of course, I forgive you. 
But it's only through you, God, that we can do that. So I just bring before you all of those broken relationships. That you and your strength would come into our hearts and you would provide us for that grace and that forgiveness and that mercy that we need to then share that with the other person. I have learned from having to fix broken relationships in the past, a lot of times they, well, almost all the times, they're broken because of egos. Because I was putting my needs ahead of theirs or they were putting their needs ahead of mine and then I became upset because my needs weren't ahead of theirs or whatever. And it all becomes an ego thing. So God, today, help, help teach us how to put others people's needs ahead of our own allow us to stop for a moment and truly try and think what it looks like to be in their shoes at this moment and what we can do even if we believe we weren't at fault in the situation what can we do to create forgiveness and create reconciliation in those relationships and god i just pray for all the relationships that are broken with you that all the people who either through hurt through the churches or people who call themselves Christians have hurt them or maybe they are taking out their anger on you and are far away from you whatever those relationships look like God I just pray for healing in those relationships as well and I, I know of course that's your heart to be reconciled to them but I just pray for those relationships for them to understand that it's not you who've gone anywhere it's them they've gone back to their kingdom that's all about them I know because I do that <laughs> And I go back to my kingdom that's all about me and I sit there in my hurt and my anger and my jealousy and, and I just get worse off and worse off and worse off and it's exactly what Satan wants me to do. As long as he can keep me sidetracked with that kind of stuff, then I'm not doing what I'm supposed to be doing for you. So God, I just pray for all of those relationships with you that need to be healed. All of the relationships with everyone else that needs to be healed. And God, I just pray for future relationships that we will continually work on putting others' needs ahead of our own rather than this desire to be right, this desire to have it be about us, this, this desire to have it be what we want it to be. God, I just can't thank you enough for all of the things that you're teaching me about through Job and the other stories or, that are in the Bible. Today, help us to understand the forgiveness that you gave us and that the people in our lives all of those relationships, they deserve that same forgiveness. Please help us with that. In your son's name, who made all forgiveness possible through his death on the cross, I pray. Amen.